Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here with 10 more tips and tricks for your Apple Watch. So even with the Series 4 Apple Watch, we got a bigger display on all of the Apple Watches, but sometimes the text is still too small to read, especially if you're getting older, if your eyesight is failing, or if you just need help zooming in on that display. Thankfully, there is a way to do this with the accessibility setting on your Apple Watch. So to enable this feature, you wanna go into settings, scroll down to general, scroll down to accessibility, and on that accessibility page, you'll see an option for zoom. You're gonna to wanna to turn that on. And when this is on, you can double tap with two fingers to zoom and then rotate the digital crown to adjust your view. Now this double tap actually works pretty well. So if you wanted to double tap a certain portion of the screen, so say you want to tap the corners of the screen, it gets a pretty good job at getting where you are tapping on the screen. This also works really well if you get a text message on your Apple Watch, maybe you forgot your glasses, or for some reason, maybe you just can't see it. And if you double tap, it will zoom in, and then you can use that digital crown again to scroll around the area to get a better view of what you were trying to look at. Now for this second tip, the Apple Watch is carrying a lot of sensitive data that you might not want to have easily accessible to anyone who grabs your watch off a charging stand or maybe snags it off your wrist. And Apple Watches come with a default four digit passcode, but four digit passcodes aren't the most secure thing in the world. They're kind of easy to break into. So if you don't think the four digit passcode is good enough, if you want something with a little bit more security, you have the option to set a longer passcode. To do this, you're going to need to grab your iPhone and go into the watch app. From there, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down to the passcode setting. On this screen, you'll see a bunch of different options, but the one that you're gonna to wanna to toggle is simple passcode. Once you toggle off simple passcode, you will get the ability to add a longer passcode on your Apple Watch. With that enabled, you get the ability to add a 10 digit passcode where normally you could only add four digits without turning off the simple passcode setting. Now, some people might be turned off by putting in a longer passcode. I mean, no one wants to spend extra amount of time if their Apple Watch is unlocked and they need to get into it, but you also have to remember that you can unlock your Apple Watch by using either Touch ID or Face ID on your iPhone. And once your Apple Watch is unlocked, as long as it's on your wrist, it's unlocked throughout the whole day until you take it off. So I really think it might be beneficial for some people to add a longer passcode, especially now that the Apple Watch has a cellular version with our messages going through there, with phone calls going through there. With sensitive data on your watch, you're going to want something that's a little bit more secure than a four digit passcode. Okay, now this next tip is a simple one, but I find that it's a little bit overlooked and not everyone I've talked to really knows that you're able to do this. And that is to switch between apps really quickly on your Apple Watch. So this doesn't require any additional settings to really access this feature. All you have to do is go onto your Apple Watch and as you're using an app, so you're in the music app and then you switch to Chirp, and then all you have to do if you wanna switch back quickly is double tap on the digital crown. Once you double tap on the digital crown, it will instantly switch back to the last app you were using. This is a great way to switch between apps quickly, especially if you're going on a workout and you wanna go back to the music app or maybe you're just checking something really quickly. Double tapping that digital crown is always going to bring you back to the last app you were using. It's a simple trick, but sometimes it's the simple ones that we forget about and this is a huge time saver for anyone using multiple apps back and forth. And now for this next tip, this is another tip that kind of got lost in the shuffle. When the Apple Watch was originally released, there was a really easy way to take a screenshot on it, but with future versions of Watch OS, they kind of buried this setting in the settings menu. So taking a screenshot is really simple once you find out where to enable it. So for this, you're gonna wanna grab your iPhone again. You're gonna wanna go into that My Watch app. You're gonna wanna tap on general, and then you're gonna wanna scroll all the way down to enable screenshots. So with this enabled, all you have to do is press the digital crown and the side button at the same exact time. This will enable the Apple Watch to take a screenshot, and once you take that screenshot, it will save automatically to the camera roll on your iPhone. So one of the major benefits to owning an Apple Watch is of course having access to a great workout app. However, if you are an Apple Watch user, you know that one of the downsides of the workout app is that it takes up a lot of battery when you're using it. With the Apple Watch Series 4, with that feature enabled, you get about six hours of workout time, but for previous generations of Apple Watch, you only get five hours of workout time. Now granted, not everyone's going to be doing six hour workouts, but even if you're doing an hour or a two hour workout, that can really have an impact 
on your Apple Watch battery life. So if you wanna save your battery life when you're doing a workout, you actually can. So to save battery life during your workouts, you're gonna to wanna to go to settings. You're going to want to scroll down to general. From there, scroll down to workout, and then scroll all the way down to power saving mode. Now with power saving mode turned off, the cellular and built-in heart rate sensor does not work during a workout. Unfortunately, with this setting turned off, although it is saving you battery life, it means that your workouts wouldn't be as accurate as if you've had this setting on. So now with this disabled, because you're not using the GPS, because you're not using the heart rate monitor, your workout should last pretty long, almost as long as a full day usage of using your Apple Watch. Speaking of battery life, one of my favorite parts about owning an Apple Watch is also owning AirPods. However, checking your battery life on your AirPods isn't as straightforward when using your Apple Watch. Well, thankfully, it's actually pretty simple once you know where to go. So you're gonna wanna go into Control Center. From there, you're gonna wanna find the battery setting. And once you tap on that battery, you will find the battery life for the AirPods. Not the trickiest tip in the world, admittedly, but it is a useful one. When I'm running around with my Apple Watch, I always have my AirPods in, so it's really useful to see the battery life on your AirPods. All right, this next tip is for managing notifications on your Apple Watch. So with WatchOS 5, we get a really great way to manage our notifications. Anytime you get a notification, you're gonna wanna swipe left and you will see these three dots. Click on that and you will get to the settings of the notifications directly on the Apple Watch without going deep into the settings menu. From there, you can choose if you wanna deliver it quietly or turn off that notification completely on the Apple Watch. I really love the ability to make these notifications silent. Sometimes you don't want your Apple Watch buzzing on your wrist all day, but you would still like to see a notification if it came in and then you can quickly access that by swiping down and seeing your notification center because there's certain apps where you just get a lot of notifications and you don't want it tapping your wrist all day. It's also a great way to see what apps are sending you too many notifications and a way to triage them so you can quickly turn them off if they're not really serving a purpose on your Apple Watch. Okay, here is another super simple tip, but I get asked this so many times in the comments field whenever I do an Apple Watch video, and that is to enable digital time on the analog watch face on the Series 4 Apple Watch. So this only works with the infographic analog that is new to the Series 4. All you have to do is force touch on that watch face, hit customize, and then you're gonna to wanna to scroll over and then you're going to want to tap that top portion of the complications field and you will get the option to change that into a digital time. So many people think this is its own watch face, but all it really is is a complication. Now I think where a lot of people get confused is that this complication only works in that specific area where I showed you. It doesn't work in any of the other complication fields, so it won't work in the little circles around it. It won't work in the four corners of the Apple Watch, but as long as you tap it in that top center area, that is how you get the digital time on the infographic analog watch face. And it really does surprise me how many people don't know how to access this, so I thought it would be a really helpful tip for you in this video. Another great feature with watchOS 5 is the ability to access websites on your Apple Watch. And now for this tip, this one is going to be a little bit strange, and that is you're going to be sending yourself a message to access websites that you wanna quickly access on your Apple Watch. So to do this, this is pretty simple. All you would do is set yourself as a contact on your iPhone and then send a link to a website that you want to frequently access. Now, unfortunately, scrolling through YouTube on your Apple Watch, video playback is not enabled, but you can always use it to check on new videos or if you're at work, maybe you wanna scroll through your own comment section. It's a really cool feature to be able to access these websites on your Apple Watch and beforehand you would have to wait for someone to send you a link, but by sending yourself your own links, you are quickly able to access websites. Just by going to your messages and having those links pre-saved, it's almost like saving bookmarks to access these websites. And the last tip for this video is one that could potentially save your life, and that is to enable fall detection on your Apple Watch. Now, the Apple Watch now comes with an ability to detect falls, but it's not enabled by default. To change this, you're gonna wanna grab your iPhone and go into the watch settings, scroll down to emergency SOS, tap on 
on that, and if you go down, you'll see on the bottom there is an option to turn on fall detection. With this turned on, the Apple Watch can initiate an emergency SOS if you have a hard fall and don't seem to move. Now don't worry, before it actually goes ahead and calls emergency services, the Apple Watch will alert you if it has detected a fall, and if you don't respond, it will tap your wrist and then sound an alarm to call the emergency services. Fall detection is a potentially life-saving feature, and you might not think you need it, especially if you are younger, but just consider, say you're out with your Apple Watch and something horrible happens, say you fall on your bike, or maybe even a car gives you a hit and run. By having that feature enabled, it could potentially alert emergency services and get you an ambulance. And when it comes to having something medically related, the faster someone can get to you, the better chance you usually have to survive. It could potentially save your life and that might just be the best tip of all. Now, as you're watching this video, you might have noticed that I'm wearing a new wristband. And every time I do an Apple Watch video, it seems I always get flooded with comments asking me, where did I get my Apple Watch band from? So I wanted to give a quick shout out to the folks at Monoware because they actually went ahead and sent me this Apple Watch band and I've really been enjoying it. So this is their contemporary leather cuff band. It retails for only $52. This is the saddle brown version and it's made out of a really nice leather. It's super thin and super comfortable on your wrist. I also really love how Monoware gives you finishes for the aluminum versions of the Apple Watch, which not too many band makers do. They automatically default to stainless steel. With Monoware, you're able to pick the silver aluminum or space gray aluminum finish. And if you're interested in the Monoware band, again, they didn't sponsor this video, they just sent one over to me. But if you're interested in it, I will leave a link in the description below. All right, everyone, and those are 10 more tips and tricks for the Apple Watch. Let me know what you thought of these tips and tricks. If you have your own, make sure you leave them in the comments below. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.